Welcome back to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. I am your host. My name is Jack McLean, and every week I stream live to update you all on the upcoming guests for our live podcast show, the PRP live chats, as well as the episodes that we release every week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. <clears throat> so let's get straight into it. Uh, this week we have JB Morin. Who will be the episode will be released on Tuesday. He is a sprinting expert with a objective approach. And for anyone that's working in high performance, highly recommend listening in. It was almost like a workshop on sprinting and power production, uh, both with a kinetics point of view, but also kinematics as well. So could recommend uh, that episode more. Um, we're also very thankful to have Swift Performance sponsor this episode. For those that don't know Swift, Swift uh, they were found, they were in 1995 were commissioned by the Australian Institute of Sport to supply the dual beam timing systems. They're Australia wide. This project was for the Talent Identification Project, project which was running for up and coming 2000 Sydney Olympics. Since then, they've continued to perf uh, produce high performance equipment to objectively measure not only your sprinting with speed gates, but also vertical jump measures and a lot, lots more. So, uh, super um, thankful for Swift coming on board the podcast and sponsoring a few of our episodes. And for all the strength and conditioning coaches working in high performance sport, definitely check out their gear. It's the gold standard. Uh, by heading over to the website swiftperformance.com. We'll chuck the link in our show notes. Hi, everyone. I'm Simone Austin, an advanced sports dietitian and author of Eat Like an Athlete. And I've worked with elite sports for over 25 years, including 12 years at Hawthorne AFL Football Club. But now I'm Chief Health Officer at Healthy Life, and I'm going to share with you our new and exciting Healthy Life Food Tracker. It's a great way for athletes to be able to track their food in real food terms. So join us so I can share more. We have our Wednesday Get Better plan on acceleration, mainly focusing on your first three steps. So for the developing footballers out there that want to dominate this season and go from good to great, definitely recommend tuning into this episode. And then on Friday, our Strength and Conditioning Coach Intern for the Upway Tacoma Football Club, Beth Dowling, will be released on the Friday episode. So we'll interview her on her journey in strength and conditioning thus far. So if you're new to the industry, definitely recommend listening in to see what Beth's doing to better her career and um, prepare herself for a successful career in high-performance sport. And uh, definitely want to tune in for that one. Uh, she has a super open and honest approach I'm really grateful for her coming onto the podcast and working with us at Prepare Like a Pro. I want to thank Troy Jones for this week's feature in our writing us a fantastic review. Troy wrote awesome podcasts with quality guests. I love how Jack allows his followers to interact and get involved. Troy has been on our Academy program. For those that don't know, the Academy members pay $20 a month they get full access to our shop for our presentations for free, as well as they have the ability to jump on the podcast and co-host with me behind the scenes and interview off air the uh, guests that ask questions to better their journey. Um, and some of the uh, content also makes the podcast episode as well, which uh, no doubt improves the episode because they think of questions uh, that may be rele more relevant to our audience, particularly the athletes uh, listening into the podcast. Uh, a lot of athletes really enjoy joining the academy, as well as uh, strength and conditioning coaches that want to work in performance sport but may um, be just starting off in their career. They've also got a lot out of the episode. And for those listening into this episode, if you email us at jack at preparelikeapro.com with the subject heading academy, I'll throw in a free one on one consultation session where in 30 minutes, We'll go over your career goals, what you want to get out of sport uh, if you're an SNC or a practitioner working in sport, as or for the athletes, we can do a field-based session or gym session. So that's complimentary for the rest of the month of January for those listening to this podcast episode only. As we know, our podcast listeners are our favorite clients. Hi, guys. Ben Parker, 
performance dietitian at the Gold Coast Suns. Next week, I'm gonna to talk to you about what's the ideal body composition for an AFL athlete. Uh, I'll also talk about the performance benefits of different physique traits and ways that we can measure and track changes in body composition. I'll also give you some practical tips and strategies on how you can manipulate your own body composition and make yourself a better, more capable athlete. Speak to you then, cheers. On Thursday, we have a really exciting uh, collaborative event, something I've been wanting to do. It's been in the pipeline for some time now, and that is having five AFL sports dietitian experienced uh, practitioners to come on and present on a certain topic. So we'll be discussing almost bite-sized sort of areas that they have a real passion for and, and, and clearly have the expertise in. And we'll I'll basically interview them on that topic for five to ten minutes. We'll be streaming live. It's a free event, and uh, like we do every I do every Thursday at eight thirty p.m. for our regular interview slot. And that's something that we'll look to do once a month for the year of two thousand twenty-two. So it's a new segment. Really keen if you've been following the podcast for a little while to hear back some feedback after this our first one and let us know if it's something you want to see more of. Um, what we're thinking at this stage is something we could do, like high performance managers that work in AFL, get five of them together or four. Um, those working in state league programs, strength and power coaches, but also the specialist roles as well, like and have that real holistic approach, like we have on the category page of our website, having sports psychologists, um, coaches, so the tactical technical side is covered as well, and then of course AFL players having a segment as well. So. Uh, if you think this is something that interests you or if you have any recommendations on a particular topic that you think would be really good to have a few experts discuss, uh, make sure to email us or direct message us on the Instagram channel or any of your socials, wherever you are, and we'll definitely take that feedback on. Okay, we're going to stream over to Instagram now to answer this week's questions. We have a new way that you can also, which is another exciting thing that's happening with our podcast, you can actually send us a voice message now. So if you head to prepare like a pro slash podcast.com, that's our podcast page on our website, scroll down to the bottom, you can send us a voice message and that is directly emailed to me and you'll be featured on the podcast on our Sunday live show, which I'm now doing and I'll answer your questions. So that's another dynamic way that we can interact, um, and hopefully I'll be able to help you with some information um, to better your game or if you're a practitioner to better your career. So if that's something you're interested in or maybe you're a parent and you, you've got a few questions or queries on our services, programs for your child uh, or just general inquiries because you want your child to be the best that they can be, uh, feel free to use that um, option to send in some questions. Hi there, my name is Dr. Rebecca Alcock and I'm an advanced sports dietitian. I've spent around six years working in different team sports, including rugby, soccer and AFL. And most recently, I was a performance dietitian for Melbourne Football Club. I've done a PhD in nutrition support for connective tissues in athletes. And I have a real interest area in nutrition for injury management and prevention, and also how we can support an athlete's rehabilitation uh, through good nutrition. So I look forward to talking to you in PLP live chats. Thank you. Okay, we're going to stream over to Instagram now for our live Q&A. If you have any questions or queries, make sure to send them through and I'll fit them in the next Sunday episode. G'day, Instagram world. Welcome to Prepare Like a Pro live chat Sunday show. We have three questions that have been sent in this week all via email. And the first one is from Barry. Barry has written, best recovery for pre-season. Good question, Barry, and obviously it's quite a broad one, so I assume you're playing football because that's what we specialise in. So for footballers, best recovery typically will be active recovery because we're doing high training loads during January and February. We want to keep the body moving, so we don't want to be just lying around on the couch. Uh, we want to make sure that your body's staying active and you're feeling good. So going for light walks can be really good. Going for um, maybe a bike ride, uh, or yoga, Pilates, any sort of low activity, even a light gym session can do it like an activation-based gym session with some mobility in there can be really good. Massage is another good re recovery in pre-season. What we want to try and limit or avoid during pre-season to maximize our athlete development, all the hard work that you're doing 
is any cold sort of freezing based uh, therapy. So think ice baths. Save the ice baths for in season where we're trying to reduce the inflammation and, and trying to really accelerate how fresh we feel going into games where what ice baths can get in the way of our athlete development um, by reducing that inflammation, which is actually good in preseason. That inflammation is what's going to demand our body to improve, whether that be get to get fitter, get faster, get stronger. So um, that would be my advice for, for you, Barry. Hopefully that helps. And for everyone that's tuned into Instagram, if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up and send through your questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Next one's from Tom. I need to drop five on my skin folds in four weeks' time. What should I do? Uh, well, there's lots of things you can do, Tom. To start with, um, I would say make sure that you go hungry on a daily basis. So when I say go hungry, don't starve yourself. We don't want to be malnourished. Obviously, as a footballer, you need to make sure you're fueling yourself to perform at a high level and to reduce the risk of uh, injuries by being fatigued. So make sure we're fueling our body with good food and, and eating healthy. A good rule of thumb is if your grandma doesn't know it, then it's probably not good for you. So, you know, real food, food that comes from the ground, food that um, comes from animal-based source, plant-based source, or, you know, fruit uh, is generally pretty safe. And for, in terms of what you tr want to try and avoid, obviously the big ones are alcohol, sugar, um, anything that's uh, takeaway based or package based, they're going to be usually more processed and not have as much nutrients. So you're going to not be satisfied and you're going to want to keep eating more of those things. G'day, Josh. G'day, Jacob. Feel free to send three questions, guys, if you have any. Um, so that would be my number one recommendation would be eat healthy, eat clean, and make sure you go hungry throughout the day. So when you are feeling hungry, think of that as your fat burning zone from a mindset point of view. So drag that out for a period of time. And you may find by improving your the amount of quality food that you eat, you're actually not as hungry because you're, you're getting in more nutrients. So eat clean uh, and make sure to remember to, to go hungry throughout the day. The opposite is true for those who want to gain. We want to try and reduce the likelihood of you feeling hungry. Good question, Tom. Hopefully that helps. If you have any more questions or queries, Geordie Love is on the live episode. G'day, mate. Thanks for tuning in. G'day, Nat Attack. Feel free, free to send in your questions. Kessie. Hi, I'm Jess Spenlove, advanced sports dietitian and co-founder of nutrition consultancy business, Health and Performance Collective, which helps motivated individuals, including athletes like yourself, live and perform at their best. I have more than eight seasons of AFL experience with the GWS Giants, and I will be talking to you about game day and how you can nail your nutrition preparation before, during, and after, week in and week out, no matter what time you start. I love talking about this because I see athletes training so hard through the week, focusing on their nutrition through the week, and then when it comes to game day, they don't have a strategy to nail no matter what time they play. I'll give you a few simple tips so you nail that each week. Next question is from Alex. I just bought a foam roller and a Theragum. When and where should I use it? Um, yeah, great tools to aid the recovery process by promoting blood flow and looking after your muscle tissue health and connective tissue. Um, I would say the best time to use it might be pre-training, particularly on your main sessions of the week, just to get the body feeling good um going into that session to help you feel primed and ready to go could be a good option particularly if you're feeling pretty sore and stiff uh, the foam roller can help you alleviate some of that soreness or, or tightness and um, and more just from a mental point of view you feel like you're, you're you're better able to attack that session and then from a physical point of view to help with recovery uh, any time throughout the day um, and particularly if you're training late at night and you're finding it hard to wind down, potentially doing some foam rolling to help you get into what's known as a parasympathetic state, um, which is a recovered state opposed to a sympathetic state, which we, where we upregulate ourselves for big sessions and, and especially game day. So um, I would recommend after your main sessions where your arousal levels are quite high, doing some foam rolling to help you get in a recovered state, which is ultimately going to help your sleep, which is our number one when it comes to recovery, can be a really, really good tool. So um, in terms of what areas to use, uh, think of the big muscle groups or the foam rollers, so your quads, your ITB, hot chocolates, good for parasympathetic activation. Oh, I'm sure they are, mate. Got to love a good hot chocolate. 
too much cacao though might be a bit stimulating depending on uh what and the and maybe the uh what is it nest cafe or netflix what is, what's the uh had a mental blank on what the sugary one is but uh yeah that might not be too parasympathetic uh geordie uh, but big muscle groups for the for the large foam roller. Um, so we want to think your your lats. Uh, so roll on the side next to your ribs, your upper back through your thoracic, uh, quads, ITB, and your calves. Um, a good, and then for the thorough gun, you can get into more specific spots like like a masseuse would be with their elbow. Um, so maybe your delts, pec minor, uh, into your hip flexors, glute med, those sort of areas. So. Typically, if it's sore and you bring the pain face on, like Kelly Starrett would say, uh, if you're not following his YouTube channel, definitely recommend it, um, then you're, you're probably avoiding the sore spots. So make sure you find those grisly sore spots and, and attend to those to get massive, maximum benefit. Hopefully that helps you, Alex. Hi, Pip Taylor, performance dietitian. This week I'll be joining colleagues and really giving an overview of what it is sports dietitians actually do and the many areas of health and performance that nutrition underpins. So whether you're an athlete or a coach or another performance support staff, the sorts of questions and the ways that you can utilize sports dietitians, whether that's across um, speed and strength development, immune support, mood and cognitive function, injury prevention and return to play, and of course, right down to um, cooking and shopping and, and all those sorts of food skills. So look forward to it and see you there. Tayab, hopefully I pronounced that okay, wrote the next one. I run every day, is this bad? Uh, assuming you play football, I, I would say it's not, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, I love the intent, mate, to get better and, and you're putting in the work. Um, I would just potentially think about the quality of your training without actually looking at your GPS or if you're tracking through your watch, what are, what are the type of sessions you're doing? Um, how sustainable is it? How long have you been running every day? Have you, are you having any um, soft tissue or overload type injuries like Oscan Slatus or, uh, or shin splints? Um, uh, but, you know, patellofemoral sort of joint pain. Uh, so if your body's not responding well to it, then that's a sign that it could be bad for you. Or maybe your energy levels are down because you're overworking yourself and therefore the quality's dropping off of your football training. And ultimately, football's number one and our conditioning and strength need to complement the football. So yes, we need to be putting in hard work to get better over time with our athlete development. But if you're fatigued all year round, um, then you're not going to be cherry ripe when we want to be as a football, which is September, um, and that's what we want to be focusing on. So I typically on our program would have three to four running sessions a week, and I, and I would, wouldn't go much more than four times a week for, for anyone. Um, so everyone is a little bit different, and there are some outliers to that rule of thumb, but in general, four times a week is plenty. Uh, and make sure that we've got themes to our sessions. So sp speed, sort of repeat beat, re repeat speed session, um, some uh, threshold-based work where your heart rate's uh, well above 90% max heart rate for a good period of time. So we're working on that physiology, working on your aerobic capacity, and um, and then maybe some mixed phys session, change of direction work. Um, so making sure that we're training for football we're not training to improve like a 5k or a half marathon um outcome we're focusing everything about the game and working back from that so think about how you play are you if you're running every day are you running it fast are you are you getting change direction work in that we need as football you focus on your first three steps these are the things that you need to be thinking about from a conditioning point of view um, to pay for, for football performance a great question, Tayab, and thanks for everyone that tuned in live. Our power tip for this week is on acceleration and, in, uh, sorry, on improving your running efficiency. So if this is something that you're interested in, have someone film the start of a run session from front on, side on, and rear, and then film at the end of the session. Same thing, side on, front on, and from the rear. And what we want to look for, look for are these three common mistakes, head movement, moving side, around side to side, up and down. We want to try and keep a nice, still, neutral neck, head position. Are your arms crossing um, crossways over the body? We want to try and be moving nice, compact, straight up and down. Uh, and are you having a hip drop um, during initial contact where our hip's sagging to the side with a foot that's up in the 
in the la- in the ground. So off the ground. So are we? Are our hips not stable? Are our glutes not strong enough? Um, and are we not running if, if moving efficiently? So if you're seeing the, any of these things, to correct it, it starts with body awareness. So make sure that you get that footage and look at the footage. What are you doing fresh? What are you doing under fatigue? Usually under how we run under fatigue is how we're going to move on game day, particularly fourth quarter, so that we don't want to always be analysing ourselves fresh. Um, We want to make sure you're also analysing yourself under fatigue, what's popping up there. Uh, Remember, as a footballer, you're going to move majority of your time at a slow pace. So if you can't move well slow, you're going to be leaking a lot of energy. And when it's your turn to go, you won't have as maximum amount of intensity to get to the ball first. So it's really, really important that we are moving well and moving efficiently. So when it is your time to go, you have the juice to be able to win the, win the contest and break away. So hopefully this helps. If you need any questions or queries or if you want to send that video through to us, feel free to. More than happy to give you some free advice. Just email it through or send a direct message via our socials and I will give you my two cents worth. Thank you, everyone, that's tuned in to this week's Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. I'll see you on the next episode. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. The uh, support goes a long way in spreading our message and helping more people not only get fitter, faster, and stronger, but also improve their lifestyle as well. So we want to feel good, look good to help our football performance. I'll see you guys on the next episode.